Pokemon is a game known for its randomness. Critical hits, freezes, accuracy, the list goes on and on. Some sick person out there thought to themselves, hey, you know what would make this random game more fun? Even more randomness. And ever since, randomizing your Pokemon has been a popular fan mode of playing the game. Last year, I entered a tournament where everything was randomized, and I finished second place, just short of winning the entire thing. And ever since then, it's kind of bothered me. I wanted another shot. I wanted to win. To prove that no matter how random things got, the world champ difference could pull me through. And that's when I heard about the random tournament hosted by VGC Pace. This tournament was interesting. It would use the official competitive format for Pokemon, unlike the fan mode of singles that I played in the last tournament. The bigger change, though, is how they gave out these random teams. If you've ever played random battles on Showdown, the way that it works is it just selects Pokemon randomly from a pool of preset Pokemon. That introduces a ton of luck, since there's no attention to synergy or cohesion across the whole team. This tournament was a random team tournament. VGC Pace is an incredible resource that gathers the top performing teams across a season. For the tournament, they selected over 100 of the best performing teams and each round you'd be given one at random. Every round you'd get a new team from this pool, so you'd actually get to experience a ton of different Pokemon and team compositions throughout the course of the tournament. I was sold. It seemed like a great way to balance the skill of battling with the fun of random battles. The tournament had two phases. The first phase of the tournament was six rounds, and I'd need to win four of them to advance to the final bracket. I sat down, turned on my stream, and took a look at my very first team. It's a Trick Room team. Ariyama, Oranguru, Torkoal, Kangambit, Scovillain, and Annihilate. Unfortunately, the matchup is horrendous. My opponent has Armor Rouge, Ndidi, Dragargle, Hydreigon, Gyarados, and Tyranitar. My team revolves around Torkoal destroying the opponent with powerful, sun-boosted fire-type attacks, and Armor Rouge is immune to fire-type attacks, and Tyranitar turns off the sun. Also, both Gyarados and Dragargle are very specially bulky, and they resist fire. If I want to win, I'm probably going to have to find a different path. For just one second, this actually looks like a pretty good lead matchup. Gyarados' Intimidate gives Annihilate an attack boost. Unfortunately, Tyranitar is holding the Mirror Herb, causing it to copy the plus two boost that Defiant gave Annihilate. Now, this is kind of spooky, but I have an idea. I go for Final Gambit into Tyranitar and Trick Room, but Tyranitar protects. It's fine though, I covered for this. Oranguru can use Instruct next turn, which will cause Annihilate to use Final Gambit again immediately. Except... I made a mistake. Oh, that's not good. Tyranitar's max HP is 207, and thanks to the Sandstorm chip, my Annihilate only has 204 HP left. That means Final Gambit won't KO. Honestly, given how threatened I was that last turn, taking only 60% on one of my Pokemon is pretty close to a best case scenario. Hard with the guitar protecting and kill Gera. That's great. Now, I need to make a play to get value out of my Trick Room. My opponent sends out Armor Rouge. Armor Rouge doesn't have Protect. I'm going to Yawn here and Kowtow Cleave here. Let me think about this. I'm actually thinking it's for stupid. Dragargle is the last Pokemon, and I send out my Torkoal. I only have one turn left of Trick Room, so I need to make a count. Let's go for Instruct and Terra Fire Eruption. Oh my god. God. With only Dragargle left, there's no way it can win a one against three, and I win game one. Even though I'd be switching teams between rounds, every round was a two out of three. So I need to win another game in this very difficult matchup. I decide to bring the same Pokemon for game two. Scovillain is worthless here, and against most of my opponent's Pokemon, I just really don't like Hariyama. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for Trick Room and Final Gambit into the Tyranitar. Because I don't think there's any way I die to Crunch. Yeah, as, as expected. I drop, defense drop doesn't matter. Trick Room goes up. Now I have a choice. I can go into King Gambit or I can go into Torkoal. Torkoal allows me to put on a ton of pressure with, I can't do that. I have to go King Gambit. Gyarados comes in. Okay. That's really actually not ideal in all honesty. Because this happens. Because King Gambit doesn't have Defiant, I'm suddenly at minus one attack instead of plus one. I'm going to go for Instruct, Terra Dark, and Kowtow Cleave. Uh, it's probably gonna low or Terra fighting. Yeah, that's okay though. This is oh, they totally boomed me. Ah, that's really bad. They super got me. Not only did I waste my Terra and take a ton of damage, I didn't even do any damage to Gyarados. Terra fighting Tyranitar is a surprisingly big problem for my team. The question is, do they have armor rouge last? Kowtow Cleave should do over 50. Instruct finishes it off. Oh, wait, they can just rock slide, right? Yeah, that was my bad. I didn't have a better play though. 
I lose both Pokemon. T Targ is a little sand damage. I have Torkoal has to go ham here, and I don't think that it can. There's no actually I can't win this, yeah. Um, no matter what's in the back, I don't I don't kill. My dragon's the last. Okay. Torkoal does his best, but it just isn't enough. I lose game two. It is all down to this final game. I decide to do something really risky and bring Hariyama. Ndidi and Hydreigon are the leads against my Hariyama and Oranguru. Yeah, helping hand. The question is, is it Draco or is it Dark Pulse? It's Dark Pulse. I survive. I'm inner focus, so I cannot flinch. I take the KO here. And that puts me at a lead. Of the three turn ones we've had this set, I would say this one was the most in my favor. Worth noting though, that I was forced to Terrastalize early. Gyarados comes out, weakening my Hariyama. So I don't think that foul play will do enough here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually instruct this. Okay, that was a mistake. That was a big mistake as it turns out. However, I'm actually in okay position. So even though I lose Hariyama there, I'm able to go into Torkoal which is a big deal because now what I'm able to do is I'm able to go for Eruption. The problem is the last Pokemon could be Armor Rouge. And if it's Armor Rouge, that's actually quite bad. But I think it's more likely to be Tyranitar. So I am going to go for Eruption and Instruct because I want as much damage down as possible. I take out the Ndidi, Instruct. I get one more uh, Eruption off. I take out Gyarados. Now it's just a question of who is the last Pokemon. Is it Tyranitar or is it Armor Rouge? Dragargle. Dragargle takes huge damage from Eruption and Instructed Eruption, and even though it takes out Torkoal, it just can't do enough to my King Gambit and Oranguru. I win the game and the set. One win and zero losses so far in the tournament. Hey gang, uh, videos like this one take me well over 40 hours to make, so if you're enjoying the content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. We're getting super close to a million subscribers, which is honestly something I never thought was possible, so if you're enjoying the content, and even if you think you're subscribed already, I'd appreciate you double checking. I'm feeling good. It was a really tough matchup, but I somehow made it work. But then I see my next opponent's team. Oh no, I know this team. I played against it in the first tournament of Scarlet and Violet. And let's just say that even with a team I built myself, things were pretty dicey last time. Eh, it'll probably be fine. What are the odds of getting super unlucky against the same team again? My team consists of Grimmsnarl, Sylveon, Garchomp, Dragonite, Volcarona, and Amoongus. This matchup definitely looks better, but I haven't used Volcarona or Dragonite all season. I will say, even though I haven't used Dragonite, I'm pretty sure that they're not supposed to run Wing Attack. Wait, does my Dragonite have Wing Attack? No way. They're yanking my chain. Oh man, no. I have Wing Attack Dragonite. If you're wondering, yes, Aerial Ace is just strictly better in every single way. Yep, and Volcarona against my opponent, Aboma Snow and Rotom Wash. Volcarona is in a great spot. So I set up Light Screen with Grimmsnarl and Terrastalize and go for Quiver Dance with Volcarona. Okay, Hydro Pump me, doesn't do very much damage. I go for Aurora Veil. Okay, this is expected. This is what we thought was going to happen. Rotom Specs Hydro Pump does nothing. And Aboma Snow sets up an Aurora Veil. I'm going to go for Spirit Break and Heat Wave here. The only question is, I think I may as well Spirit Break the Rotom here. It's, oh, that wasn't ideal, was it? Aboma Snow terrestrializes to water, going from quadruple weak to fire to resisting it. Not that it matters anyway, because uh, Heat Wave misses. The combination of Spirit Break and Heat Wave doesn't even do a quarter of Arcanine's health. And Aboma Snow does decent damage to both of my Pokemon with Blizzard. I set Reflect up as Grimmsnarl takes a little bit more damage, but I'm no closer to getting these Pokemon off the field. I decide to double attack into the Aboma Snow. Heat Wave from earlier ends up really hurting me. A lot. I ate the Flare Blitz. They did a ton of damage. I go for Blizzard. No freeze, please. Why did I say so? Yeah. The odds of Blizzard freezing a single Pokemon is 10%. The odds of it freezing both are 1%. And the odds of it freezing both and Grimmsnarl not thawing out are 0.8%. 8 in a thousand. This is actually even worse than if both my Pokemon had just been KO'd, as at least then I could switch a new Pokemon and try and attack. Since I'm frozen, my opponent can reposition for free, since I can't do any damage. They bring in Goldengo to try and set up, while they KO Volcarona. Grimmsnarl stays frozen. I go into Garchomp. Now I have a choice to make. Arcanine and Goldengo will both go down to Garchomp's Earthquake, as will the low HP Aboma Snow in the back. Because of this, I decide to predict Arcanine to switch into Rotom, as it's their only ground immune on the field, and Goldengo to protect. I should make a play here, I think. Yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about! That's why they call me Wolf Click, baby! Woo! 
Um, okay. We're not out of the woods yet though. I need to get the most value out of my Pokemon. So I decide to make another play. I feel like if I'm in their position, I'm switching Arcanine in for Rotom, right? If I'm in their position, I'm just not making the right move, it seems. Rotom's Hydro Pump misses Garchomp, but because of the light screen from earlier, that probably didn't matter. Obama Snow comes back out. So I can go for... <laughs> wing attack it's time and dragon claw wait a second pause champ it's not grass type anymore i forgot about terrestrialization i can go for dragon claw and dragon claw to protect that's fine i go for dragon claw my opponent is down to their final two pokemon but neither of them can handle my dragon types garchomp's earthquake ko's both of my opponent's pokemon and i win game one for game two i decide to switch up my pokemon so i decide to replace grimmsnarl with amoongus bringing my total ice weaknesses from two to three the battle starts and volcarona and amoongus are staring down goldengo and kilowattrel kilowattrel does a ton of damage to volcarona but i survive and set up a quiver dance goldengo subs but amoongus puts kilowattrel to sleep overall i think it's a pretty even trade I go for another quiver dance to make sure that I live Goldengo's Shadow Ball, which I do, just barely. But Amoongus heals Volcarona up with Pollen Puff. Suddenly, Volcarona is looking extremely scary. Heat Wave brings Kilowattrel down to its Focus Sash and breaks the substitute on Goldengo. And even though Goldengo is trying its hardest to get rid of my moth, Amoongus heals it up with Pollen Puff, letting it end the turn with more health than it started. So now. I can go for Heat Wave and Spore. And the question is, who do I want to Spore here? In order for this not to work, I'll Spore the... The Goldengo's more pressure to switch, right? Never mind, I spored wrong. Didn't matter. It was only... It only mattered in case I missed, basically. Volcarona takes out Kilowattrel as Rotom comes in. But Rotom has no way of getting past Amoongus. Garchomp is revealed, and my path forward is clear. Volcarona and Garchomp both terrestrialize. But unfortunately for the Land Shark, it's not a very favorable matchup. And with only Rotom and Goldengo left, my opponent has no way of getting past Volcarona. I win game two and the set, putting me at two wins and zero losses in the tournament. Wait a second. Have you eaten today? If you're anything like me, finding time to make food is tough. And it's also hard to find time to go grocery shopping. Why does that have to be so hard? Well, thanks to today's sponsor, it doesn't have to be. Factor 75 is a pre-prepared meal delivery service that fits your lifestyle. With more than 27 meal options each week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and vegetarian, there's always something for everyone. Meal plans range from four to 18 meals per week, and you can add or reduce that number or skip a week if you need to. This is by far the most flexible and convenient meal delivery service out there, and it's healthy. Stop ordering takeout and try Factor 75's dietitian approved chef-made meals in just two minutes. Reach your daily goals through nutritious and purposeful eating. As a YouTuber, competitive Pokemon player, and vegetarian, finding time to make food is a nightmare. Thankfully, Factor 75's website is super easy to use. There, you'll be able to see the full menu for the week, including pictures of how the food will look and exactly what's in it. If you are in the process of finding healthy things to eat stressful, I recommend checking out Factor 75. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGWOLFIEFEB50 for 50% off your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thanks again to Factor75 for sponsoring this video. Oh, playing against that team is so stressful, but at least I never have to do it again. I have to play it next round? There are over a hundred teams in this tournament. Playing against the same one back to back is extremely unlikely. Oh, I don't like this at all. I, I lose. I super lose. Oh my God. If they see it, I can't win this if they see it. See what exactly? My team is Ndidi, Armor Rouge, Goldengo, Baxcalibur, Annihilate, and Mudsdale. And my opponent has Choice Band Garchomp. My team has zero Pokemon immune to ground, uh, zero Pokemon that resist ground, and only one Pokemon that outspeeds Garchomp. To make matters worse, only one Pokemon on my entire team has Protect so I can't even reposition around it. If they make good use out of Garchomp, it's pretty much doomed. It's so doomed. I'm trying desperately to find any way around Garchomp, but I just don't see anything. Oh my God, it's so doomed. If I win this one, I'm the GOAT. 
the only consolation is that this is the third time i've played against this team the first time i lost a game to back-to-back -back rock slide flinches and the second time i almost lost to a double blizzard freeze there's no way i get unlucky again for a third time right the only pokemon i have that can stop garchomp from just running over my team is choice scarf final gambit annihilate which i can lead with ndd to final gambit the garchomp and get trick room up my opponent leads with garchomp and rotom which gives me the chance to get rid of garchomp right away this actually looks pretty good i can use final gambit to make the battle a three against three and get trick room up bye bye oh no pa crit para <laughs> yeah so not only did that critical hit ignore ndd's special defense boost causing it to take way more damage it also somehow paralyzed and full paralyzed in the same turn which prevented trick room that's a four percent for the crit a 30 percent for the discharge para and a 25 percent for the full para for a total of 0.3 percent or a three and a thousand chance of happening I can still win if I get Trick Room up, but that turn one makes it so much harder. To make matters worse, I make a mistake. I try to Terra Fairy my Armor Rouge, but I accidentally do it on Ndidi. Did I just... I thought I was an Armor Rouge. No. <laughs> yeah, that turn had a 7.5% chance of happening. If I hadn't been paralyzed, I would have been poised to win this game but now it's kind of looking over. Rotom and Goldengo team up to take out my Armor Rouge, making the battle a one against three. Unsurprisingly, Rotom paralyzes Baxcalibur with Discharge, though for the first time all battle, Baxcalibur actually attacks despite being paralyzed. Do you all even know that could happen? Wait, if that had crit, they would have, they could have. Wait, what? Wait, what's their last Pokemon? Is it Arcanine? Hold on. My Baxcalibur is Assault Fest, which means it won't get KO'd in one shot by Kilowattrol. Ice Shard drops Kilowattrol down to 5%, but Baxcalibur lives the Terra Flying Air Slash. After all of this bad luck, after being down one against three, is it possible that I could still win this? Is this the world champ difference of legend? <laughs> This is my Joker moment. Now, normally after losing game one, you would assess what you did wrong and make an adjustment for game two, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I bring the same Pokemon for game two. This time, my opponent leads off with Rotom and Goldengo, and it's time to learn from my mistake of last game. I go for Final Gambit into Rotom and Trick Room. Aboma comes in, but this is night and day compared to the last game because Trick Room actually went up. I'm a little worried about Goldengo terrestrializing and going for a Shadow Ball into Armor Rouge, so I make the safe play of going for Follow Me and Heat Wave. Aboma Snow sets up an Aurora Veil as Goldengo makes it rain with a critical hit dealing massive damage to Armor Rouge. Without the Steel Typing though, there's nothing stopping Helping Hand Expanding Force. I KO both of their Pokemon, forcing them into their final Pokemon, Garchomp. Garchomp lives the Expanding Force, but it's taken way too much damage. Baxcalibur comes in and cleans up the battle. On to game three. I once again bring the same four Pokemon. I just don't feel like Goldengo or Mudsdale are doing much for me. Because Kilowattrol is Focus Sash, I don't have a good target for Final Gambit, unlike the last two games. I decide to go for Shadow Claw and Trick Room, thinking that even if Ndidi flinches and can't get Trick Room up, I'll at least have Shadow Claw pressure on the next turn. Shadow Claw does half to Goldengo, but I take a ton of damage from Air Slash and make it rain. Trick Room goes up. I decide to switch Annihilate into Armor Rouge. Are they really going to Shadow Ball me here? Nah. Okay, I was like, did they do it? I live? I live! Nice, damage is adding up. Thunderbolt comes out. That's fine by me. I know both sweepers in position. I think that it's in my best interest to launch a Glaive Rush here. Hey, they predict against both. They're stalling my Trick Room, which is actually pretty spooky. Expanding Force takes out both Goldengo and Kilowattrol, putting me in the lead, but I only have one turn left of Trick Room. If I don't make it count, I could easily lose. Aboma Snow and Garchomp are the final two Pokemon. Garchomp terrestrializes to ground, but I double it with Expanding Force and Glaive Rush, taking it out. With only Aboma Snow left, there's no way it can beat all three of my remaining Pokemon, and I win the game and the set. 
three wins zero losses in the tournament there's three rounds left in this stage of the tournament and winning even one of them ensures that I advance to the final bracket I've already overcome such abysmal luck to even get here in the first place I decide I want more I want to win all three sets my next team is Tyranitar Lycanroc Rotom Heat Annihilate Dundozo and Tatsugiri and I'll be facing off against Murkrow Garchomp Breloom Hydreigon Goldengo and Arcanine unfortunately for me this matchup looks abysmal I have a negative Breloom answers and Breloom beats not only Tyranitar Lycanroc but Dundozo and Tatsugiri as well when in doubt Rock Slide one out I don't have anything for Garchomp but I don't really have any match any matchup here I decide to double into Breloom to try and take it out oh they're gonna try and take me out I died to that oh yeah going down a Pokemon this early makes the rest of this game look very bleak but I'm not out yet I send out Annihilate I predict Breloom to protect and switch into Tyranitar to get the KO with Sandstream I get the call correct but Arcanine does a ton of damage to Annihilate with play rough Murkrow comes in and suddenly I'm in pretty good shape I can switch back to Rotom and Rock Slide and as long as I don't KO Murkrow which I really shouldn't I can not only stall turns of Tailwinds but take both KOs on the next turn that was the worst crit I've ever gotten that was an abysmal crit ah, I was fine I was fine okay what is my Paratype. the problem with critical hitting there is I give the opponent a free switch into Goldengo whereas otherwise I could have taken both KOs at the same time this is the crucial turn getting it right probably wins me the game but otherwise I'll probably lose they're specs right so if they I'm gonna Terra here I think I made a mistake I made a huge mistake I was I was fine oh it does nothing it's weak as heck please don't miss oh I won oh my god how did I win this how did I win Arcanine can never win against what I have left and I clean up game one I decide to bring the same Pokemon for game two with Murkrow and Breloom it's just way too risky to bring Dendozo and Tatsugiri which kind of forces me to bring the other four my opponent leads with the same Pokemon from last time as well now last game the opponent took out my Lycanroc with a turn one double up of extreme speed and mock punch so this time I decide to Terra Ghost and become immune to both of those attacks okay don't miss don't miss don't miss don't miss okay it's a big kill it's a huge kill in all honesty with Breloom down they're now exponentially weaker to uh I forgot what I was saying now I could close combat the Hydreigon but I am minus two attack so it probably won't even do that much damage I'm gonna go for Rock Slide here because if I get the flinch I'm in just in much better shape I can also miss that's a good idea Wolf thanks Wolf anytime Wolf oh they missed okay it's two in why they call me Mr. Champ World with Tyranitar on the field now I can go for close combat and rock slide and even though their Pokemon do a bit of damage first they both get KO'd what is the final Pokemon if it's Garchomp I could still lose oh it's Murkrow I win the set putting me at four wins and zero losses in the tournament and guaranteeing my spot in the final bracket but I still have two rounds left to play in this stage and I want to win both of them for the fifth round I was given a team extremely similar to the team I faced in the last round Garchomp Hydreigon Goldengo Murkrow Breloom and Mousehold I'd be facing off against Gengar Garchomp Rotom Wash Grimmsnarl Corviknight and Annihilate okay let's give this a shot so it's Goldengo and Breloom lead which is a little slow a little passive into Grimmsnarl and Gengar okay I go for nasty plot and spore thinking they either have to choose between getting damage on Goldengo or stopping Breloom spore with taunt air grass shadow ball oh they're actually doubling me this is uh good for them damn wait are they doubling no they didn't double okay cool now I know this turn probably looks abysmal because uh all I did was put one Pokemon to sleep and I lost almost all of my health on two of my Pokemon but honestly it really wasn't that bad Goldango and Breloom KO both of my opponent's Pokemon, putting me in the lead four to two. Annihilate and Corviknight are the last two Pokemon. Shadow Ball into Ape and Spore into Heal. They protect, okay. They Tailwind. If I get the Spore off, I'm in amazing shape. Excellent. Okay, that's really good. I decide to let both my Pokemon go down so I can get free switches into my final two. I even use Mock Punch to intentionally activate Corviknight's Rocky Helmet, KOing my Breloom. Now it's all down to the dragons. I go for Swords Dance and Dark Pulse as Annihilate protects and Corviknight stays asleep, which is a super positive turn. I'm gonna Dragon Claw and Dark Pulse. 
So I'm faster than this. They wake up, they go for Brave Bird. They actually should kill themselves with a the recoil, and I think that means that I just win. A Rage Fist doesn't do much damage. Dark Pulse, 50, and then Dragon Claw, the other one's 50. Game one done. Now I just have to win one more. I bring the same Pokemon to game two, but my opponent switches it up and leads with Rotom and Gengar. I go for Terra Fire. I wanted to bait this, ideally. I go Protect and make it rain to scout for Gengar's Taunt or Rotom's Terra, and they actually go for both. Make it rain brings Gengar down to its Focus Sash, but Rotom's Thunderbolt does a ton. Gengar taunts Breloom, but I go for Bullet Seed, taking it out. Rotom tries to hit Goldango with a Terra Blast, but I switch to Garchomp and take basically no damage. Corviknight switches in. I expect Rotom to protect and Corv to attack into Breloom, so I switch out and Swords Dance. Nihilid comes in, they want to take the hits, but I'm not going to let them do that. I'm going to Swords Dance. They taunt, they got me, they boomed me, they totally boomed me. Oh my goodness, they absolutely Omega Turbo Ultra boomed me. I try to get a little cheeky by switching Garchomp into Hydreigon and attacking with Goldango, but Corviknight just Brave Bird's Hydreigon, doing over half of its health, and Annihilate crits Goldango, picking up the KO. I bring Breloomin and Protect, but my opponent doubles my Terrastalized Hydreigon, picking up the KO and wasting my Terra. Now, uh, things are looking bleak. Garchomp and Annihilate both set up as Breloom puts Corviknight to sleep. It's gonna come down to sleep turn. After another slow turn, I decide to make a read. They got me. They got me. Shoot. I don't think Berloom takes this. This Corviknight is actually a problem. Well, yeah. Well, I don't take that. I get the play wrong. Annihilate takes out Garchomp, and I lose game two. Once again, it is all down to game three. Okay, so what went wrong in that last game? I think the main issue was just that I didn't make good use out of my Hydreigon. It's a super strong Pokemon in the matchup, but I didn't really do anything with it. For game three, I decide to bring Murkrow and Hydreigon up front. My opponent sticks with Gengar and Rotom. I could spec Draco the Rotom here as the other option. Okay, and I like switches in. That's fine, honestly. I'm gonna do big damage here. Yeah, thanks to the specs. Given how much trouble Annihilate gave me last game, I am very glad to get damage on it early. I switch Murkrow into Breloom and Dark Pulse Annihilate again, but Annihilate blocks it with Protect as Rotom switches into Corviknight. But now the position is heavily in my favor. My opponent doesn't have a good way to stop Spore except for Taunt. But thanks to the Tailwind I set up, they cannot taunt me before I Spore. Rotom blocks Spore with Protect, but Corviknight switches into Gengar who eats the Dark Pulse and goes down to its Focus Sash. Sludge Bomb. I don't get the poison. Do I get disabled? I could have just killed both. No disable. Nice. Sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Corviknight re enters the field, but it's also asleep. I'm in such a good position that I actually decide to pull back on the gas a little. I switch Breloom into Murkrow to maintain my speed advantage and Dark Pulse the Corviknight. Not only do both Pokemon stay asleep, but Rotom actually wastes its Terra because it's anticipating a Bullet Seed. I take out Corviknight as Rotom wakes up and does a tiny bit of damage to Hydreigon, but this match is nearly over. Annihilate is forced back in, and though it protects to try and stay alive, I predict it and take out Rotom with Dark Pulse putting me up four Pokemon to one. My Dragon finishes off the ape and I win the set, putting me at five wins and zero losses in the tournament. Only one set remains for this first stage. And if I win, I could get a buy through the first round of the final bracket. And you know, fate has a funny way of interfering with our beloved funny game of Pokemon. Would you like to know which team I was dealt in this final game before the elimination bracket? None other than the very first team I faced in this tournament the Dragargle Tyranitar one. My opponent's team was new, with Talonflame, Skeleturge, Goldengo, Annihilate, Tyranitar, and Houndstone. I lead off with Gyarados and Tyranitar. Just like in my first set, I'm able to intentionally activate Defiant to activate Tyranitar's Mirror Herb and give it plus two attack. My opponent double attacks into Gyarados, taking it out, but I terrestrialize into Fighting and use Crunch to eliminate Goldengo keeping the Pokemon score even. Houndstone and Ndidi replace the Pokemon that it faint, but Houndstone immediately switches into Tyranitar as I set up Trick Room. I take out Annihilate with Crunch, putting me in the lead. My opponent predicts both Pokemon, trying to stall out my Trick Room. This next turn will be the last turn I can actually make use of it. Yep. Hit both, game over. GG. Okay, that was still kind of tricky though. For game two, I decide to switch it up. Armor Illusion DD versus Tyranitar and Skeleturge. 
This is a horrendous lead for me, truly abysmal. I go for wide guard and switch to Gyarados, but my opponent calls it and crunches the Gyarados switch in as they shadow ball my armor rouge for the KO. I try to double Skeleturge, but the opponent calls that too and protects it as they bring in Annihilate. I just realized they could have just... What was I doing? They could have just... Yeah, they uh, could have just close combated and KO'd Tyranitar, so... Uh, lucky me that they didn't. I try to set up Trick Room. Okay? Don't flinch, 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 don't flinch. Pongers? My opponent switches both Pokemon out, but I call it and go for a Rock Slide and do a ton of damage to the switching in Skeleturge. The problem is this Goldango. I need to get a Rock Slide flinch. I go for it, but I don't get it. Yeah, that's my bad. I honestly forgot that Goldango could do that. That's my bad. Make it rain KOs both my Pokemon, leaving me with only my damaged Gyarados against Goldango, Skeleturge, and Tyranitar. This is over. Right? Oh, right. It's max speed Goldango. Wait. Wait. Um, chat, you know, it's not, it's not guaranteed over, actually. There actually is a way in which I win this because Goldengo has terrestrialized into the water type. And the thing about water type Goldengo, the thing about water type Goldengo is that it's no longer steel type. And the thing about it no longer being steel type is that with only one attack left, only one turn of sand left, it will actually faint, making this into one versus one. Now, I don't believe that Gyarados is, it's definitely not strong enough to KO Tyranitar, but if it flinches, Ah, does that matter? Three turns left? I it doesn't matter. Well, I could have just Dragon Dance, but yeah. Yeah, they got it. Okay. But I had a pretty good chance of winning, surprisingly. I had a surprisingly high chance of winning here. Once again, it is all down to game three. I decide to one more time try out a different lead. No Annihilate. No Annihilate. No Annihilate. Guitar. Ape. Okay, Ape Escape time. Every other time this set, my opponent has chosen to lock into Rock Slide instead of Close Combat. Should I predict them to do it again? I need this escape going. Okay. It's not a perfect trade, but it's not a horrible one either. Getting rid of ape right away is pretty nice, in all honesty. I don't take that much damage either. I thought I would take a lot more. So actually, I like this position much more than I did before. Goldango comes in. I double attack into Goldango, but it protects. And Tyranitar nearly finishes off Gyarados. I make the same play again, but my opponent switches into Skeletor and sacrifices it in order to keep Goldango alive. I'm up three to two, but if any Pokemon can turn this around, it's that gosh darn Goldengo. I predict Goldengo to Terrastalize. I messed up. Okay. No, they crit me. Oh man, seriously? What a way to go. I was fine, they crit me. <laughs> Losing Helping Hand there is a huge problem, and suddenly, I'm really on the back foot. I protect Hydreigon as Goldengo terrestrializes and launches and make it rain, which my Tyranitar survives. Tyranitar also survives their Rock Slide and retaliates by doing a ton of damage to their Goldengo. Wait, I can win, 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 I can win. Okay. Rock Slide only did, that was their strongest attack against me, and it only did 18.8%. I have 19.8% left, so... I win on a rock slide miss. I could also make the read and go for Dark Pulse into Titar. I got the KO. What do they go for? Rock slide comes out. I survived. They get another crit, but do I flinch? Let's go. That was very close. That was not an easy matchup. And just like that, I am six wins and zero losses. It feels great, but there isn't time to celebrate. It's time for the final phase of the tournament. Four rounds, all best of three. And if you lose a single time, you are out of the tournament. It's make or break time, as I pray for a good team in my first round of this final bracket. I start looking at the matchup. Oh my God, it is Omega Turbo Ultra Doomed. I have no matchup. Oh, wait, it's lit. At first, things are looking really bleak, as my opponent is using a very powerful rain team that also has Breloom, and the only Pokemon on my team that can handle the water types uh, are Pokemon that lose to Breloom. But then, I notice something. My team has both Tatsugiri and Dendozo, yes, but the Tatsugiri doesn't have the Commander ability, it actually has the Storm Drain ability. <sighs> Bozo's not very good here, which means I either have to bring Arcanine with Extreme Speed and Flare Blitz in close combat, or... 
I'm bringing Arcanine. We did Pelipper and Goldango. Okay. So here I have a couple options. Um, but I don't have that many options. So the problem is that they can just wide guard me, right? Okay. Hydro Pump misses. That's why I don't run Hydro Pump. They Shadow Ball me. That's too much damage. And I think I just straight up lose now. Okay. <laughs> Not getting the damage onto Goldango is a massive problem. Especially as the next Pokemon my opponent sends out is Dreadnought. I decide to leave my Goldango in since there's nothing in the back that I really want to take a Shadow Ball. The Shadow Ball again. Get the KO. That's fine, right? Even though my Goldango faints, I think that this turn has gone in my favor. I bring a Meowth Grotta and try and Sucker Punch Goldango, but it switches into Hydreigon. Dreadnought terastalizes and brings Meowth Grotta down to its Focus Sash, but Tatsugiri's Hydro Pump does a ton of damage to Dreadnought. This turn has made things pretty precarious, and what was looking like a winning position for me suddenly feels a lot more up in the air. The next turn is a bit of a nothing burger, as I bring in Arcanine and Protect, and they bring in Goldango and Protect. This next turn is the crucial one. I sucker. I forgot the scarf. Good thing I paused. And close combat. I take Goldango. They focus energy and get the crit rate up, which is scary. But I crit them because I'm the best. I don't think that mattered, to be completely honest with you. Like, I think because basically by going for that, they were always in range of close combat. Plus, I think sucker punch probably. I'm gonna go for, I'm just gonna I'm just curious to see how much this does I think they're in range of sucker punch yeah so it actually didn't the crit didn't matter there honestly it was a pretty clean game one but the set is definitely far from over I bring the same Pokemon for game two but my opponent switches it up and leads with Palafin and Goldengo Berloom switches in that's a huge switch they oh they got me but I do a lot of damage which is great I do a ton of damage in all honesty yeah look at all this damage what did Tatsu actually I cannot afford to let Tatsu go down yet, right? So what I'll do is I'll switch here and Shadow Ball. It's like a free Shadow Ball, basically. They go into Palafin Hero for me. They protect. They mock punch. They crit me. That's actually a massive crit. A gigantamax crit. Okay. You might be wondering why I chose to save Tatsugiri when it's already pretty low HP. Well, the opponent's Palafin is Choice Band, and Choice Band Transformed Palafin can KO every single one of my Pokemon with its powerful water type attacks. Except, Tatsugiri Storm Drain not only redirects all water attacks to the user, it also makes it immune to them. In other words, letting Tatsugiri go down before I've KO'd Palafin is very risky. I switch Tatsugiri back in to protect my Goldengo, but my opponent switches Palafin into Hydreigon, anticipating a Shadow Ball going into that slot. Unfortunately for them, I Shadow Ball the Breloom, finishing it off. Goldengo switches back in. So the position is, I should have guaranteed game from here. They have low HP Goldengo, who can't protect. Palafin at low HP. I have Sash Meowth, so I'm going to Icy Wind and Shadow Ball here. As long as I don't miss Goldengo, I should be fine. I get another crit in the Hydreigon. That's unfortunate for them, but not me. Shadow Ball comes out. Dark Pulse kills Tatsu. Okay. I can go into it now. I think that I've guaranteed they have not. They have Terra. So I can go Flower Trick and switch into Arcanine here. And what that does is it ensures, thanks to the Icy Wind Speed Drop, they can't really do anything to punish that. It is in Hero Form. It just, it just doesn't show up here. Because it's Choice Band Palafin, they have no counterplay to this. I can switch out. I Flower Trick, take the KO on Palafin. Focus Energy comes out. Um, and then I can just knock off and close combat, and that's good. And in the end, <laughs> Storm Drain Tatsugiri was a huge factor here. They didn't fall for it, but the Storm Drain Tatsu was an enormous factor here in, in my in my victory like a super big factor because they couldn't they're basically they brought palafin they were just immediately on such a back foot because uh they couldn't they couldn't get around storm drain there's only eight players left in the tournament now and everyone here has proven that they have what it takes when it comes to these random battles the teams are given out for the quarterfinals and i take a look at the matchup okay let's take a look at this it's ghost murkrow with sash uh life orb miascarada spex goldengo titar with lum and dragon dance aev arcanine with snarl Swords Dance, Clear Emulet, Garchi. Okay, and then I have King Gambit. What the heck? Um, what on earth is this? Okay, did I read that correctly? Yep. Okay, 
well here goes nothing i guess so at first glance this team might not look that bad but it's by far my least favorite one that i've had to use for the entire tournament here's the thing in competitive pokemon moving before your opponent is a massive deal and one of the best ways to control the pace of the battle not only is my team full of incredibly slow pokemon i don't have a single move that can help them get faster no tailwind no trick room not even any thunder wave and my opponent has incredibly offensive pokemon that naturally outspeed almost all of mine choice specs goldango meowth and tyranitar this is arguably the worst matchup I've had in the entire tournament. I lead with Hydreigon and Grimmsnarl against my opponents, Murkrow and Goldengo. I go for Light Screen and Dark Pulse, but Icy Wind and Terra Steel Make It Rain takes out my Grimmsnarl and does over half to my Hydreigon, despite both Light Screen and Assault Vest. At least I get a Dark Pulse off, except it only does like 40%. I try to spore the Murkrow, but it switches into Meowskarada, while Goldengo does even more damage to my Hydreigon. I try and take out Meowskarada, but they protect and switch into Garchomp, as I switch into Azumarill. I once again try and hit the Meowskarada, but they call that too, and Swords Dance with Garchomp as they switch into Murkrow. Garchomp does a ton to Azumarill, as Murkrow takes out my switched in Hydreigon, but Azumarill fires back and KOs Garchomp with Play Rough. This next turn will decide the game. I call Meowskarada to protect and spore the Murkrow. If I get the double protect, I can still win. I'm so close. I need a double. I went on a double, I think. Come on, baby. One and three. Oh, I failed. Okay. Ah, dang it. I don't have enough damage left. I'm so close. I just needed a little more. If this thing was gone, I could have won. Okay. With only Amoongus left, I can no longer win this. And I lose game one. This, I think this might be the end of the run, folks. I think this might be the end of the run. Going down a game in a matchup like this makes the idea of winning the set legitimately seem impossible. But I can't think about that. All I have to think about is winning the next game. Last game, both Hydreigon and Grimmsnarl were abysmal, and so I'm going to leave them both behind and instead lead with Amoongus and King Gambit. My opponent leads with the same Pokemon as last game. Please don't. They crit me. Please don't flinch. Please don't flinch. If we don't flinch, we might be okay. Okay, no flinch. My opponent switches in Meowskarada and blocks Sucker Punch with Protect as I bring in my Skeleturge. My opponent saves Garchomp by switching into Murkrow, but I survive Meowskarada's knockoff thanks to a timely terrestrialization and pick up the KO with Torch Song, giving me the first lead of the set. Goldengo comes back in. Goldengo terrestrializes and finishes off Skeleturge, but King Gambit fires back, dealing over half of Goldengo's HP with Kowtow Cleave. With all the damage I've dealt, I'm getting closer to Checkmate. Get the Sucker off, this should kill. Okay. Murkrow goes down to Sash. That's game. Okay. It's all down to game three. Okay. Game three. A loss here means I am out of the tournament. They're going to lead with Garchomp. I know they're leading with Garchomp. That's, that's something I know for sure. Since I know they're leading with Garchomp, why don't I do Hydreigon and a because that exerts a lot of pressure with Azumarill and King Gambit in the back. The opponent leads with Arcanine and Garchomp? Whoops. I have two options here. I could terrestrialize my Amoongus to water to survive the Flare Blitz, but if they read that with Flower Trick, I'm done for. Or I could leave Amoongus unguarded and go for Draco Meteor and Spore and basically just hope to trade one Pokemon for one. Well, it was a nice play, but it might be all right. Amoongus doesn't die to this, is the thing a lot of recoil there putting arcanine to sleep and getting some damage on goldango honestly really works in my favor i don't need to lose this just yet heal comes out we got the terra out which is great maybe a flinch flinch out they crit me they they crit me i that's really bad this battle has totally swung around because i took so much damage this turn no ah, i missed draco not one turn sleep okay Oh, this is getting really bad really quickly. Garchomp comes in. I'm technically up in Pokemon, but three of my Pokemon have super low HP. Please stay asleep. Please don't die. The crit mattered so much. Oh my God, the crit mattered so much. <sighs> yeah, this is looking like the end of the road. Half health Amoongus and Azumarill against Garchomp, Arcanine, and Meowskarada. Arcanine can always take out Amoongus, and Meowskarada can always take out Azumarill. This one's as good as over. 
Guard Tron protects as Aqua Jet takes at Arcanine, but it doesn't matter. My Amoongus doesn't have Protect, which means Earthquake and Knock Off into Amoongus is a guaranteed win for my opponent. Unless they misplay. If I survive? Don't miss! Wait, could I win? It all comes down to this. The problem is, Meowth Grotta will always take out Amoongus here. And the only move that Azumarill has that can KO Meowth Grotta is Play Rough, which misses 10% of the time. Surely, after all this, I'm not gonna lose to a miss, right? 90% of the time, I win this. Come on, come on, come on, Azu. Oh my God. That is without a doubt the world champ difference. There's no time to rest. My next match is already here, except there's a catch. You see, there's actually a secret final phase to this tournament. In order to minimize the odds of the very end of the tournament coming down to dumb luck in team selection, the rules change a little bit when there are only four players left. Each player will be dealt not one, but two random teams, and they get a choice as to which one they use. Unfortunately for me, both of the teams that I am dealt have some pretty serious problems. The first team is Garchomp, Murkrow, Blech, Goldengo, Annihilate, Torkoal, and Farigaraph. It's a hybrid Tailwind Trick Room team, which is cool, but there are some interesting choices. The only Pokemon that likes being in Trick Room is Torkoal, and its item is Safety Goggles. Without a boosting item, there's no guarantee I'll be able to overwhelm my opponent in Trick Room, which is a problem because if I'm going through all the trouble to set up Trick Room, it might be a problem if none of the other Pokemon on my team actually want Trick Room to be up. On top of that, Torkoal doesn't benefit from Tailwind, and Furigraph and Annihilate don't really benefit from Tailwind either. It's not a bad team, it's definitely better than some of the teams I've used, but it looks really difficult to play with zero experience. The other team consists of Amoongus, Gyarados, King Gambit, Talonflame, Meowskarada, and Annihilate. Now, this team seems way more my speed, but there's two main problems. First, only two of the Pokemon have Protect. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, but in competitive Pokemon, Protect is a really good move because it allows you to keep your Pokemon safe and reposition with a lot less risk. The other problem is, uh... Wait, Hasty Gyarados? Why? Yeah. So Hasty Nature raises your speed, but lowers your defense. There is no reason to run on Gyarados over Jolly, which raises your speed at the cost of your special attack, which is a stat that you actually never use. So Gyarados, one of only two Pokemon on the team with the attack Protect, which I need to keep my team alive, has a nature that causes it to take 10% more damage from physical attacks. It's a really tough choice between the two teams, but in the end, I decide to go with Hasty Gyarados. It might be a mistake, but I think it'll be more intuitive for me to use than the Torkoal one. I load into the battle and take a look at the team my opponent has selected. To my surprise, I am staring down a hard Trick Room team. Hariyama, Farigaraf, Meowskarada, Skeleturge, King Gambit, and Dragapult. One of the best ways to beat Trick Room teams is to alternate protect every other turn to waste the turns of Trick Room. So bringing a team that only has two Pokemon that have protect might really bite me. I lead with Annihilate and Amoongus against my opponents, Dragapult and Meowskarada. Dragapult terrestrializes to fire as Amoongus terrestrializes to water. Annihilate protects, but Dragapult flamethrowers into Amoongus. Choice Band Protean Meowskarada launches a U-turn at Amoongus and switches into Farigaraph, but Amoongus survives and puts Dragapult to sleep. Not a terrible turn, but I wish Amoongus had more health. I decide to make a read. Like, I don't think it's super likely that Dragapult stays in here, right? Oh my god, Wolf Glick! Ow. Die, 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 die. Oh, I'm so good. Oh my god, I'm so good. Oh, I'm so good. That turn was a huge swing, as Choice Band Meowth Grotta was one of my opponent's best tools to stop my Annihilate. Dragapult comes back in, but it's asleep. Annihilate does a ton of damage to Dragapult and heals back to full HP, while Amoongus survives the Dazzling Gleam and puts Farigaraph to sleep. Annihilate takes out Dragapult, revealing King Gambit as the final Pokemon. King Gambit goes down to Drain Punch, and I win game one without losing a single Pokemon. For game two, I decide to switch it up. 
My opponent's lead last game of Meow Scarada and Dragapult shows me that they might not be that comfortable with the Trick Room mode. I decide to counter their lead from last game and go with Meow Scarada and Talonflame into Dragapult and what I thought was going to be something else. Okay, that's quite bad. My Talonflame is Terra Ghost, so I decide to be a little cheeky and try and catch them off guard by using Terra Ghost to potentially block a fake out. They got me. They super got me. Oh, they really got me. Oh, they really got me. Oh my God, they got me. That didn't go very well in all honesty. I predict Dragable to switch out and double attack into Hariyama. It just barely survives a Brave Bird, but U-Turn finishes it off. Three Pokemon left a piece. Dragapult is sent out, and I bring out King Gambit and Meow Scarada. I once again predict Dragapult to switch out. Okay. Grass, how much does this do? Is that enough? No, it's not. Oh, but I lived. Things are getting very precarious because of the damage I took and the fact that Tailwind is about to expire. If I'd picked up the KO, I had a guaranteed win, but Skeletor surviving there means that by the time Dragapult re-enters the field, Tailwind will be gone. This turn is really hard. Their Meowth Grotta can KO mine with Sucker Punch, but it could also KO my King Gambit with Brick Break. Getting this turn wrong will definitely lose me the game. Depends on this play. Okay, I think I got it right. Brick Break? They locked into uh, Brick Break. Now, this might look like a winning position, but there's a problem. My Meowth Grotta is Choice Band, and it's locked into Knockoff. And if my Amoongus goes down, I won't be able to get rid of their Fighting-type Meowth Grotta before it KOs both of my remaining Dark-types. I need Amoongus to survive this double up. Amoongus Rage Powders and takes the Flamethrower, but it goes down to Brick Break. Meowth Grotta takes out Dragapult, but now things are looking kind of grim. I have two dark types, neither of which can protect against my opponent's fighting type choice band Brick Break Meowth Garada. Their Meowth Garada barely survives Sucker Punch and Knock Off and KOs my King Gambit with Brick Break. 50% of the time I win this. 50, I won. I'm the best. I'm the GOAT. I'm in finals. Let's go. Definitely a messy end game, but hey, we take those. Against all odds, I am in the final. If I win this final set, I'll have won the entire tournament. All right, chat, we have a choice to make. This is team one. King Gambit, Teradark, Goggle. Hariyama, Standard. Torkoal, Clear Smog, Specs. If this gets into position, it can just run over a team. Sash Meow, AV, Dragonite, and Ferrigarath. I've been offered Ferrigarath a couple times. I've never had to use it. I guess I haven't been offered it. The other team might look familiar to you. It's a team you've seen before. This weakness policy, Armor Rouge, Indeedy, Dragargle, Hydragon, Gyarados, not, not hasty, and Mirror Herb, Tyranitar. It's another difficult choice. Should I step into the unknown with a volatile team that I have no experience with or gamble on the Dragargle team that was first my bane and then my ally? I go back and forth. And in the end, I make my decision. The Dragargle team is the better choice here. I know how to use it. I've got some experience with it and the natural bulk of the Pokemon make it a very stable choice. And yet, I choose the Torkoal team because I am a content creator and an entertainer. And this is a random tournament. I did not enter this tournament to play with a bunch of teams that I already knew how to use. I entered to show that no matter what team I'm given, I will win. So I chose the lesser of the two teams and challenged my opponent to one final set. Talonflame, Sylveon, Meow Scarada, Goldengo, Mousehold, and Annihilate are what I'll be facing off against in the finals. And I immediately notice a major problem. My opponent has Choice Scarf Final Gambit Annihilate. I have a Trick Room team that very much needs Trick Room to go up in order to win. And my only Trick Room setter is always KO'd by Final Gambit Annihilate. Yeah. I lead with Meow Scarada and Furigraph into my opponent's Annihilate and Goldengo. Final Gambit, okay, nice play by me. Flower Trick comes out. I do a chunk of damage. They are now at minus one special attack, okay. Not the worst turn by any means. It's looking like I'll actually be able to get Trick Room up. I go for Trick Room and Sucker Punch, but to my surprise, my opponent switches both of their Pokemon out. They bring in Meowth Garada and Sylveon. I got Trick Room up, but now my 1 HP Meowth Garada is kind of just sitting on the field doing nothing. I decide to make an absolutely unholy read. I Sucker Punch Sylveon and Trick Room with Farigarath. If you use Trick Room when Trick Room is already set up, it will turn off Trick Room and put the battlefield back to normal. So why would I do this? I'm predicting their Meowth Garada to go for Trick Room. 
So I have to make this play. Which is Sucker Punch and reverse my own Trick Room. Hyper Voice comes out. And I call the reverse Trick Room on their end. This not only gives me a free switch into Torkoal, it also gives me four more Trick Room turns. And now, calling the double Trick Room allows me to go for Hyper Voice and Terra Fire Eruption. And I can take advantage of one of the main weaknesses of this team, which is that... Uh-oh. I didn't realize that was an option. It's not enough damage. That's fine. That's not fine. Okay. Losing Frigograph there is a major issue. I'm now down two Pokemon left to four. I think I can do it though. I just need to take a couple KOs before Tricker runs out. And because neither of the Pokemon that they brought in the back have Protect, I should be able to win this. Protect. They got the double. No. Oh my god, I'm going to lose because of that. Meowth Garota getting a 30% chance for a double protect is game losing. If Meowth Garota faints there, I'm all but guaranteed to win. Surviving for one more turn allows them to sacrifice both of their last two Pokemon to reset Meowth Garota and Sylveon, and then protect to stall out the final turn of my Trick Room. Without Trick Room and without protect on my Pokemon, there's nothing stopping Sylveon and Meowth Garota from cleaning up Hariyama and Torkoal. I lose game one. That was a really bad game to lose. My team desperately needs Trick Room to go up, but it feels impossible against Final Gambit Annihilate and Trick Room Meowth Garata. If I were up a game, all I would need to do is somehow cheese out one more win. But with no room for error and having to win two back-to-back -back games in a matchup like this, it feels impossible. Even though I've already shown my hand, there's just nothing else I can do that can handle an Annihilate bleed. Unfortunately for me, my opponent adapts even further, leading Meowth, Grotta, and Annihilate this time around. I protect Furigraph as my opponent doubles into it, which is good. The problem is, this time my opponent went for close combat instead of final gambit. Because my Furigraph is Terra Normal and not Terra Fairy, I can't even Terrastalize to survive the combination of close combat and knockoff. Annihilate Terrastalizes to Fighting, and we trade Furigraph for Annihilate. My opponent gives up their Terra, but I give up any hope of getting Trick Room up. Torkoal and Sylveon hit the field. I'm worried that if Meow Skarada goes down, I'll fall too far behind, so I protect it and attack with Torkoal. Ugh, that sucks! Torkoal brings Meow Skarada down to Focus Sash, but it took so much damage in the process. Things are looking okay, though. The last Pokemon is most likely Goldengo, just like it was in Game 1, which means King Gambit is actually pretty neatly positioned to clean up this game. I need to make a play this turn. I read Meow Skarada to protect. Okay, hold on. I need damage. Please survive, Torkoal. They crit me! I was fine and they crit. Oh my god! I'm now down to my final two Pokemon. King Gambit with full HP and Meowth Grotta with almost nothing left. I should still be able to win as long as that final Pokemon is Goldengo. Sylveon protects, but King Gambit finishes off Meowth Grotta with Sucker Punch. They have quick attack on this thing. Oh, last Mon's Talonflame. Are you serious? This is the turn that decides the game. I have a couple options and which one is right all depends on what Talonflame does. If Talonflame brave words my Meowth Grotta, I'd like to Kowtow Cleave it with King Gambit and protect Meowth Grotta. If it Flare Blitzes my King Gambit, I can KO it first with Sucker Punch from both of my Pokemon. But if it will King Gambit, I probably want to Sucker Punch Sylveon and Kowtow Cleave with King Gambit. I only have 45 seconds to make my decision, and I don't know what to do. Two of my best moves involve Kowtow Cleaving Talonflame, so I decide to do that and protect Meowth Garada. Only Talonflame uses Flare Blitz. <sighs> It's tough. I played the set really well in a matchup that felt impossible and still came up short. Pokemon can be frustrating like that. By all accounts, the odds were in my favor to win both of these games. A failed double protect game one, Torkoal getting crit game two, either of those small changes could have caused a reversal of fate. It feels especially bad because I feel like I had to work so hard, make so many plays correctly, and even still, I lost. I just can't believe that over the course of this entire tournament, I never got lucky. Maybe I don't have the world champ difference after all. What? King Gambit lives Talonflame Flare Blitz in the sun? Sylveon quick attacks King Gambit, but that leaves me Grada free to KO it with Flower Trick. Somehow, against all odds, we are going to game three. For the third time, I am forced to lead Meowth Grada and Furigraph. My opponent goes back to their strategy from game one, Annihilate and Goldengo. 
now in both of the other games i have protected Furigraph turn one and attacked with meow scarada this time for the first time i'm gonna leave it vulnerable and try to get trick room up i got it right is it enough oh is it enough tons of damage i don't know if it's enough the problem is that now i have to play a cheeky guessing game trick room goes up but that pesky Meow Scarada is back on the field and can reverse it at will. I take a Goldengo and damage Meow Scarada, but the Pendulum has swung the other way. Sylveon comes back in and threatens a double KO and the Throat Spray. Worse, Sylveon is Terra Fire. If it Terrastalizes, it resists the attacks of all of my remaining offensive Pokemon and can KO King Gambit with Terra Blast. In other words, I need damage on Sylveon. I make a hard read that their Meow Scarada is going to protect and go for Overgrow Boosted Terra Grass flower trick into the sylveon yeah i mean i knew it was coming but i still had like i had to go for it because i need damage on this thing more than it is. oh hold on a second meow's karate goes down but it's done its job sylveon is now in range of sucker punch i bring out king gambit king gambit ko sylveon but meow's Grotta takes out Ferigarath. we're both down to our final two pokemon i sucker punch annihilate but close combat takes out king gambit hold on Flamethrower, please. Oh, oh, they've already terrored. Oh, I won. And that's how I won an all random team tournament without losing a single set. If you enjoyed and want to see more content like this, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.